special guest in the building join us though miss aisha bar there we go hey bless up bless up bless up thanks for following yes how are you you all right well that dep- all depends on what all right means mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. i would ask you if your clothes were well, just a little bit information it, it matches the mood <laughs> like fiery mood. But iry right now iry. at this moment yeah okay cool that's good to hear no no people would know say you're the daughter of a legendary figure within the music that helped to build the music to where it is right now mm-hmm. right so first of all usually introduces as a hi i'm daughter of aston barry <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you're basically trying to build your own brand and thing right now so right. how is that knowing say you know people might close the door or open the door for you based on who your parent is well um so for me at one point in my life like i've never really highlighted my dad's my last name or really talk about who my dad was mm-hmm. To me, it was from day one, it's always about branding Aisha, okay. you know, because I wanted to just be acknowledged for me. I don't want to hear because people are going to say, OK, because you're a celebrity daughter or something that everything is just given to you or you're supposed to have this. And it's supposed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I like to work for my own. So as far as image goes, too. So I never branded myself. A few years ago, like my Instagram handle was like Aisha Whalers. Yeah. So automatically people thought, oh, Bunny Whaler daughter. Mm-hmm. Nobody has, you know, affiliated me to my dad. It's like, oh, it says Whaler, so it must be Bunny Whaler. Mm-hmm. Not telling like when I first came across it, the handle, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, I have to keep answering questions every day in my DM. No, 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 correction. No, I'm not Bunny Whaler daughter. Mm-hmm. And then I said, you know what? Let me just put Aisha Barrett. So immediately when I put Aisha Barrett, this is like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know? But still. So it changed because of what people did. No, not yeah. even. I just, I kind of, like I said, I'm Aisha. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Aisha Barrett is still Aisha, but I'm Aisha, not the daughter of Aston Barrett, but just Aisha. So the Whalers she's thing. She's a rebel, you know? She, she oh, really, yeah. Yeah. So the Whalers <laughs> thing was because you wanted people to know that association. No, well, I was, I was touring with the Whalers. I was with my dad for oh. years, so... I just did that once I got on, got on social media. Mm-hmm. I just thought, okay, oh, let's put Aisha. Wait, I was Aisha Milan actually first. So I was in the Bronx. And then I, once <laughs> I joined the band, I was like, oh, Aisha. Just a little bit tight, well, okay. With the Bronx? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That comes out. It comes again. <laughs> are, you, are you crazy for real? <laughs> Them said people from the Bronx, crazy. No, we're mad. We're mad. You know? <laughs> yeah. if, if you have to walk on no, White Plains Road, you have to be, a, you have to be mad. Because, wow. You know, I want hot block. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, so you're a whaler. Yeah, you're a whaler. Yeah, so I just did that to affiliate the self, you know, because I'm on the road and to, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm posting content and stuff like that. But yeah. after a while, I used to get cussed out a lot. Oh, you're always wearing bikinis and his whaler's last name, this handle. Yeah. And, you know, your sister's too sexy on the gram. So I was like, all right, okay. We're going to tone it down. We're just going to remove the name. Yeah, so yeah. you're just Aisha Music. Oh, we're not going to take off the picture of them. Let's take off the name. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's Aisha music now. Yeah. So I figured, no, people don't know that I do music. Mm-hmm. They just see Aisha Barrett. So I was like, all right, let's change it to Aisha music. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you said that you, you toured with the Whalers. So what were your background singer? No. So from age 14, I used to, it was like my vacation getaway. So even if it's like a two day off from school, whether it's a snow day or something, I had to be where my dad was. So I had to be on the road. And then I'll be around the merchandise. So when I joined the band, I would say 2017, I branded myself as their merchandise manager because I love designing and stuff. And to me, it was boring what they had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to put my little spin on it because I want it to be more fashionable. I want it to be like, not just as a regular t-shirt to come and buy at a concert. Yeah. Wear it every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I put my spin on that and it became a brand where it's just like, oh, it's like, you know, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah, and then I did that, and I was like, well, I was their publicist at one point, social media marketing, and yeah. Okay. So I wanted to ask what you added to it that made it different. I made it sexy. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, and then I started calling myself Reggae Dolly because I would go on the road and people would like, let's say a guy would come to buy a shirt and I don't have their size, I'll make it fashionable. So because of that, I'll, I'll wear it to say, listen, don't worry, I don't have your size, but right for your girlfriend she could cut it up she could do this mm, so yeah, I started yeah. calling myself Rick and okay. kind of put a little you know no, no. so you have no aspirations to be on the stage to sing I did want to sing I did um, my dad used to tell me to go find my key I think he didn't th- at one point I don't think he thought was I was he ready was telling you say you can't sing no inst- <laughs> no alright so here's <laughs> the thing your key, <laughs> listen I was key I go <laughs> my house key well, was so what at first mean. I thought that yeah, yeah. yeah thought it was a host cause he would buy me a keyboard and I was like, yo, buy me a karaoke machine. And every time I would just mash them up and you just replace them. I mean, I say, 
why you keep on a bite of something here? Like, mm. with a the mic there? What a yeah. little speaker box or something while you're about myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, go find your key. And you're not ready yet. And, you know, when mm. you find your key, you come. And I was like, I thought I'd figure out what he meant at first. So I came back and I was like, oh, I'm a soprano. He's like, what is that? I'm like, what you mean? I'm in the choir. I'm a soprano. Like, I hit the high notes. Mm-hmm. He's like, you still not get it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I guess uh, there's an as a singer, you know, I guess the piano, playing the keys and all that stuff, it mm. helps you to learn your tone and all yeah. that stuff. And then, does. yeah. And then when I figured that out, I went to him and I said, oh, I understood. And he was like, so who you think you sound like? So I was like, well, I would say I'm a cross between Taylor Swift and Rihanna. And he was like, that's your problem. You need to sound like Aisha. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me say you sound like nobody else. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's what you mean. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so you're still the keys. Are Daddy just did that stress you all. Stress me all. If it was by one little microphone, I want a jukebox. Right? Help me, Daddy. That was a part of him just wanted you to find your, your own part. And yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah like, on her own. <laughs> However, have a second condolences yeah. because he passed um, last month. I believe it was just where there was a funeral, right? Yeah, last week Tuesday. Last week Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Family go. man. Um, Jeffy was doing a little research. I said <laughs> he has forty-one children. Oh boy. That's why his family. His <laughs> All right. nickname is Family no. Man. You know what? My dad actually had that nickname before he even had children. Yeah. It's just a man with a big heart and just love people, and he's a family person. You yeah. know. And so he just try to live up to the name. No, not even that. I say he just connect with people like that on a natural level, and people uh, just start calling him the family man because mm-hmm. a man where he would take him last and just give you like that, and you know. So he put himself, put people first. So he got that nickname long before he even started having children. Yeah. So all of them come from him. <laughs> Arima. Okay, so I'm gonna speak about the 41 tribe because that's what I call them these days, the 41 tribe. My dad did an interview, I think around 2013, and he mentioned in the interview he had 23 daughters and 18 sons. Mm -hmm. Me, no, being a little girl growing up in Jamaica, you know, as a kid, you end up in adult conversation when you belong, you know, and you hear a little story every now and then, and you know what, you know, you know, what jacket from one of jackets. But also, it's it's visual. You can look at somebody, and to me, even though they say genetics plays different roles, I would like, I have a sister. She might be mad about this, but I don't really care. We have the same mom, right? Mm-hmm. And it's three of us. And my brother, rest in peace, Kimani. We look alike. Kimani is the oldest. Both of us look the same. Mm. My sister in the middle. She's pretty much white. Light skin. My mom is light skin too. But I was like, girl, we look the same. Same mom, same dad. Where do you fit? And I was like, your dad is white. <laughs> wow. so, and then you hear people are talking. But you know, my dad, he loved everyone. And I think a part of that 41 tribe my dad took on responsibilities that because he felt like if I'm with this woman, her kids are my kids. So I do feel like I always said I need a DNA party. I don't claim nobody. If me ever meet you for a certain time, me does not claim nobody. Yeah. And me would know there's a certain look, you know, the eyes, the lips, the nose. You just see family man. Mm-hmm. If I see you, I don't see that. I am not claiming you. Anybody ever approach yeah. you? You know, my brother. Listen, sister. Sister. I've had situations where I've had siblings that we were probably like enemies in school and turned out that we were supposed to be related. Wow. My brother that passed as well too found out him and another brother were brothers when they, they used to go to the Sovereign Arcade back in the days and used to play games together. And I think they end up at the same at my brother's house and they realized that they were siblings. Oh my God. And for me growing up, I started being racist when I date because I didn't want to end up with a brother. So I started dating white guys. Uh, yeah because i was just like all right you're very very milky so guess what <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> I way because yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. like, at one point i was like Mm-mm. and i used to watch soap opera like passion and you see them stories i was like okay yeah, you don't yeah, want a, you don't do want a, a star situation right a star link we found that. out we're cousins <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't, I don't think you know what i could be wrong it could be more mm. it could be less but i just yeah. feel like because i know for a fact Based off my household, my sister, who he actually raised from birth, gave mm. her the last name Barrett from birth. So because of that in my household, I know for a fact that there are some people that he took on that responsibility. Would I meet them with a baby? Uh. Mm. Brother in the belly or out of the belly. Mm. But he meet them, probably add on or two. Some of them, he probably don't even have kids with them. Mm. But because he had that, like them say, if you're good, any would have called, right? So situation like that. And yeah, and family Bobby man. Do that too. See. Was it that that that, that no for the man I used to do during them time? Eh? I mean, I see no I for the man. I didn't call it jacket. He would see you and I'm like, 
Are you one of mine? Wow. <laughs> yeah, and just, you just like that. You just like wow. <laughs> maybe. <Wow. laughs> uh, this one, they just no, no. Uh, yeah, me know something yeah. you don't got there. You bring up a conversation about being a user. Yeah. Like, Who's your mom again? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Them did I live for them best life? What the best, best life? No. Bestest wow. life. Yeah. Best. Best. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, party and then say, I love you. I love you. <laughs> and say, come around our back. And that's <laughs> it. That's it. Something about that bass line had them jumping. <laughs> I'm telling you, like the bass in my name. Yeah. First are the drummy, second are yeah. the bass in regards to who the girl them look on more. Wow. I'm telling you, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Experience. Experience. Experience being a drummer. So, drum. I mean, had, so the funeral just happened. Mm hmm. What was that like with like 41 plus plus so. just kids alone and then you can imagine the grandkids mm. the uh. great grandkids the funeral wasn't what it should have been it didn't turn out the expectation were different mm. lots of drama oh and, boy yeah um, i heard there was a fight lots of drama mm. oh yeah <laughs> 41 children um we have had a few deceased you know but um, as far as the organization of that, it, I think it's a big disrespect because he wouldn't have wanted that. I think he would have wanted all his children in one room. Mm. You know, even if they weren't there, at least send a video clip or something, reach out to them and make sure that we knew of them. Because there are times when I, feel, I still have siblings that I don't even know. Mm. I know of them. But, and I've always been saying, let's have a DNA party, let's have a Barrett party to see who's going to show up. And, you know, I also feel that like the preparation should have been like, maybe a week before or the day before the funeral, post something and said, can we all come together and meet each other and do something so we don't look like strangers in the room? Mm -hmm. And it was, it's like a segregation funeral. You have the chosen family over here mm -hmm. and then you have the rebel, which is me over here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was just, it was just weird. You know, I didn't go to the one in Miami because I wasn't ready to, to say goodbye because he died on my birthday. Wow. Yeah, and I had I just seen that. him before he passed away. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm still like, it's still not real to me. Because all I could see in, in my in my head is just like the face I last seen, which is mm. eyes open. I just fear to say we're close to him. Very close. Mm. You know, as I call myself the favorite daughter. <laughs> you know, who want Vix can Vix. Yeah. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> watch out for the family, yeah. Yeah. No, but I, they know me. I have to speak yeah. very bold. bold. If, if yeah. people see you right now and you ask him, who is your favorite daughter? And I feel like you put me in this position. You said... Where is Aisha? Who's troubling her? <laughs> he would say that. And I would like, but oh it's just my, my thing. I mean, if anybody else want to claim, they could say whatever. That's just how I feel very confident. What is fight though at my funeral? Can I see make an Instagram post say Aston Jr. attack you from behind? Yes. Oh. Uh, what go on there, sir? So, all right, I went to the service. Um, I got the invitation, invitation to the service. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't included. Wow. I made a post, I think, a few days before the funeral, and I said, all right, this is the second funeral again. Once again, nobody reached out to me to say, hey, do you want to read a scripture? I'm not asking to come sing. First of all, I'm not even, I don't even have that strength to be up there to perform. I was asking to see, let me read my dad's favorite scripture. You know, let me say something. I just, I don't know who else saw him before I did, but I know I seen him before he passed away. You know, so I wanted to speak on that, and not only that, because that was my birthday, and there's so much pain you know mm -hmm. nobody reached out to say anything i did reach out to the family and i sent a message and i said hey can you guys let me know when is you know what's going to take place nobody responded got the invitation and i said first of all i saw it i didn't like it because the preparation didn't sound like my dad mm -hmm. like i grew up 12 tribe you know mayor rasta there's different people with different backgrounds and i respect that but yeah. the world know the man rasta Keep the tradition going. Bury him the way he would want. Put him in name Rasta color. Do the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I saw the post and it was like, oh, it's an all white funeral. I was like, well, being a Rasta, I'm from the tribe of Joseph. And that's my color. So I would wear white to anybody's funeral because I'm representing as Joseph. My dad is from the tribe of Gad, which is red. So you either bury him in red or people come in red. Mm -hmm. That's just what I know growing up. You know, yeah. what I've grown up and seen. So I was like, oh, white. I said, I'm not Joseph funeral. So... It's not a white, it shouldn't be an all white, but I said, well, because I don't want any trouble, I'm going to wear my white. So who was in charge of you know, planning this? The funeral? chosen family. I you keep on saying that, I was just about to ask you what that mean. Like, so these are children that my dad supposedly married to, still married to their mom. Okay. Oh. You know, my dad was married to their mom. Um, they're saying that he's still married to her. I rest my case. It seems but, like a dispute that, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And 
it doesn't matter because if you're a stepmom, you have you come with responsibility and you know what this package was included. A bunch of pitney. So nobody should be single out, especially at a time like this when he says you can't bury somebody twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Putting the anger to the aside, when the feelings are aside, let's come together. Even if you fake it for one day, mm. do it for him. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like having so many of the children being excluded, it was a disrespect to him. You know? Like reach out. There are other siblings that were saying that they send photos in. Their photos didn't make the slides, and mm. it's only wow. the ones him that they preferred. And mm. obviously, yeah. mine make it in. I'm surprised. Me see myself up there. So I was like, watch goody. <laughs> yeah, you know? I wanted to you ask if you, if you reached out. I reached out, but mm -hmm. you know because we I, go back and forth, they yeah. not going to communicate with me. But still. Like I said, I, my photo made it. Yeah. my I saw my son photo up there too. I was very shocking about that too. But I just feel like we could have come together to plan this celebration as our final goodbye. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to see him again. You know, regardless of things happened in the past, already happened. Let's move forward. We can forgive. We don't have to forget either. But where we are carrot go now? Where, where is it going? You know? Yeah. So like I said, respectfully, I followed the, the dress code and I came in my all white. Because I started telling myself, you know what, you're Joseph, you know, you're a color seal. Just do mm. the right, just do it. Mm. So I wear my dress. Within, I would say an hour, because it was a concert first, my dress ripped. I got up and I just felt the thread on the back of my leg. Like oh it no. just a reload. Oh no. Wow. And I rushed outside. And by the time I could have walked outside to find another one of my brother, I was like, you got to take me home because my butt's about to be outside. Mm. And he looked and he was like, turn around. He's like, oh, it's bad. So I end up going home, putting on my reds. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I was supposed to be in my red in the first right. place. Mm. <laughs> so I come back in my reds. I don't know if the red triggered them, which I wasn't the only person wearing red. Respectfully, my grandmother was wearing a red too because it's our culture. That is what Right, it's his, rear it's in his the video mom? that post. No, that's my mother's yeah, mom. Okay. So she's wearing her red, mm -hmm. you know, we have always her, have on the, tam, the Rasta or Tam or Banner, yeah. which is what we know. We wear it. You know, I wasn't wearing the official one, but I had on, you know, what I could have found. Mm. But it was a peaceful service. Nobody troubled me. I didn't trouble nobody. Even at one point, though, I went to look at the body and I felt like it was being bodyguard. And I was just like, listen, I don't even have the strength in me today. I hope this is not what I'm picking up the energy. I walked away, came back again with my uncle and I was able to see the body. Honestly, I don't even remember what he looked like because that's not even my dad, what I saw. So that image Whoa. is already gone because I'm trying to hold on to that visual of what I saw him the last time. So mm -hmm. I think that's what exactly. I keep saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that passed and I said, all right, the day goes smooth and time not forgot to the burial. So everybody's like, you're coming. And I'm like... I don't think I, I think I want to go. And then I said to myself, my brother had passed away. My uncle passed away. My sister passed away. And mm. I wasn't able to attend the service. Mm. We're going to Dovecot. Why not just go and go find them and mm -hmm. just you know, pay respect to them as well? Mm -hmm. So that's why I ended up going to the burial ground. Everything was smooth. I honestly feel like the attack was planned. Um, so I was there. Right then, they released the, the doves. The dove, I was nowhere close to them. They released the dove and the dove come right on my foot. <laughs> and I looked down and I say, what well, I go on farms? <laughs> and I see another one flew over my head. I was like, oh, what's wow. up, Carly? So I was like, oh, look at you brothers. You know, I was just like being funny. And then within no time, I see somebody walk up to me. This guy tapped me on my shoulder. And he goes, um, beg your money, no? So I look at him, I say, what? He said, well, to everybody, I say, look, I got you all the money bag. I started <laughs> laughing. I said, why do you say that? He said, what's your name? I said, I am Shabarit. You know, and he's just like, Parrot. He said, what's your relation? I said, that's my dad. He said, shake my hand. I said, why you say, I'm supposed to shake your hand. So I shook his hand. I said, who are you? He said, I am the funeral guy. Like, I am, I am Perry. Mr. Perry, you know, this is my business. And I'm the one who drove your dad here mm. i'm supposed to shake your hand and i got chilled you know mm -hmm. i was just like wow you know we we're just talking laughing and it was distracting me that because i'm still looking over there and i'm seeing you know they were doing a little ceremonial stuff and i was like okay the body's about to go down now so while yeah. he's talking to me i'm shaking and that's the worst so i part. said to him you know take my number we exchanged number and i said i'm gonna go in the back because i'm trying to walk away now because the emotions is coming up you know mm -hmm. coming in i was like oh shit, this is real like this is it. Mm -hmm. So I stumbled upon a gentleman. He had the camera and he was just like, we're doing a last tribute to family man. You know, is there anything you want to say before you go? Now I'm in the middle of crying. You know, so I was just like, ah, 
not really. He was like, what's your relation? I said, that's my dad. And I started crying. And he was like, can you just, you know, say something? And I was like, why not? You know, I took the microphone. I said my little piece. I'm giving him back the microphone. Out of nowhere, I see Aston Jr. jumped in front of me. Snatch my glasses. First of all, I'm warm up my glasses because 600 I'm going to pay for my glasses. They look wow. expensive. Really. <laughs> yes, my Emilio Puji. I wow. like it back. <laughs> so, he, <laughs> my was all right. so he grabbed the glasses off my face. I was shocked. He was trying to, like, he was looking at me like, should I crush it? Should I, should I hit her? Like, you know, how are they like I can't fight? Yeah. So, yeah, think about your actions. Like, should I do this or should I not? And I'm like, what's going on? Because I'm, I'm in shock. Like, What's up? Mm-hmm. What do you think you're doing? You know, he's doing... And I'm like, dude, are you serious right now? So I turned around to walk up because I'm like, we're not doing this. Like, this can't be real. And he swung at me. So I'm kind of doing my little dread leading. I'm kind of easy, you know, because I'm not going to swing back, you know. Because at that moment now, you're warm, mad Aisha, right? You yeah, draw me out for the longest. I'm going to hold it down because as a female, I feel like I'm not a luck. And if I open my mouth, take her ear. So, oh, she's crazy. She's this, she's that, and blah, blah, blah. So I was going to swing back at him, but then I was grabbed. Julian Marley grabbed me and said, Aisha, come, walk. So I'm walking off to safety with Julian because, you know, the commotion and he's trying to get me out of the way and make mm. sure that I was okay. And out of nowhere, you just hear noises and everybody's running. Crowd is running toward. That's why I said it was planned. Here comes a crowd running towards so he used to say, come, 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 come walk. And somebody's like, go get the cops, go get the cops. The cops are down there. So I rushed away from Julian because I'm like, oh, this look like, because at one point I panicked to like, are you taking me to safety or are you taking me to go get more hits? Like I wasn't sure what was going on, you know? Yeah. I'm just as confused. I'm confused and I'm in shock. And before I know it, I turn around to make my way to the parking lot. I felt a bag hit me on my back. What? Yeah. This was their cousin. She swung the bag down. This female don't like me. She, my dad raised her. And I think she wanted my position as the daughter. Yeah. <laughs> she hit me with the bag. It wasn't like, oh my God, I was hit so hard where I'm wow. hurt. Because if I hurt, it will be a different story. So when she licked me, I'm turn on my glimpse. I'm going to say, I fear bag licked me. So my marker said, okay, so you hit me. Okay, that's an assault. Okay, so I'm going to say, you know what? I see how this is going to go. We're in Jamaica. You guys feel like the so way that Jamaica, maybe them feel like so the law here is not, you know, as good as overseas. So let's, let's attack her here. But like I said, there's many ways to hang a dog. So my God, I couldn't have in a moment because that was disrespectful, not only to me, to my dad, but to the dead people. Them. I couldn't come a dead yard a fight. Like, come on. And so, on a raw topsy, like, come on, where's the respect? You know so what I mean? you say you attack, do you know why? Yes, because I've been venting about my dad. I've been venting about my dad as far as his care. Mm. I'm, I've never said that they didn't love him and that they weren't doing a a good job. Oh, you mean him, Aston, take yes. care of him. Okay, so because Aston, he was sick for some time, yeah. right? My, my, my dad's been, my dad's had multiple stroke um, from 2015 and mm. he's been back on the road. I mean, as a, you know, a st- stroke patients are required to do a lot of exercise, be on a lot of people, socialize mm. to yeah. keep their mental going, you know, and muscle to regain their muscle strength. So right. you can't have them just laying or sitting down for a long period of time. I've always said to them, you know, He's a musician and this is what he loved doing, making dead on the stage, you know? So when he retired, my dad, I didn't like that. I said, it's not you guys' choice to retire him. Make him say, no, uh, come on the road. Even if you guys don't want to make him play or if you're like, he's not strong enough to play, bring him on the road. And then when the show done or encore, make him come on the stage, come take a bow or something. Make the fans them know same day here. Make him sit on the merch table. Like, bring him out. This mm-hmm. is his thing. Mm. But once he came off the road, it's like... Everything went downhill. It started to decline. You know, some yes. people might hear you say that now and say, maybe them shouldn't prop him up just to so just be yeah. there. that he's not feeling 100%. Yeah. No, he wants it. My dad will literally, because what I do, because I have a son. So when we're on a US tour, every day off, I'm flying back home because I got to mm. go see my kid. And I'll go see my dad. And my dad will be like, is it time to go yet? So he's always be wondering where we at. Like, but not tell me it's a tour star. So even I really realize that so he may even retire. Uh-huh. Like, he might think that we don't have no tour. Uh-huh. I don't think he knew when he got retired. So wait, was he in the hospital or was he like in like um, outpatient care? Or so he at towards the, the last days, he was in the hospital. He was in the hospital. Yeah. But when he had the stroke, mm-hmm. so he had one He had one in 2015. So it, it, was he retired from 2015? No, he wasn't retired. He, so he when did was therapy he? and he went back on the road and, mm-hmm. you know. So 2015, 2016. Maybe he didn't need to rest his body, but he was back out because he wanted to be back out. Mm-hmm. So he was back out on the road. I for how long? My dad literally stopped 
performing in 20 i'm gonna say 20 late 2018 2018 so late 2018, 2018. yeah yeah because i remember because i got married in 2018 and i remember my dad flew in from london the day after i got married and he was like what was the rush and i was just like well listen this man was about to change his mind so i'm sorry i couldn't wait <laughs> you know <laughs> i was like he kept on switching the dates so wow. I was just like, listen, you just I got wonder to why I'm did I go change your mind? But brief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna fall upon lot on the people them son. So I was just like, if I understand, say you know, but That's he laughed. <laughs> yeah. I don't think my my dad liked my husband at the time. Oh no, yeah. you guys still married? Technically, I'm in the middle of a divorce. Uh, I, I, I think it's final. I think it's final. Yeah, should I'm be. Notice me never seen a ring. You should yeah, be. Yeah. Why are you looking? I'm looking. <laughs> I mean, not, but yeah, but I'm looking. Yeah. No disrespect to him. I have no issue with um the ex-husband. You know, mm. no issue with him. If he's not, if my issue with me, that's between him and himself. But I don't keep malice with people. I just can't live in vengeance. You know. Mm. Mm. But yeah, okay. my dad. I would say fully 2018. He came off the road, but. So he had a stroke in 2018? No, he was just So home. he was still re- oh. recovering from the 2015 stroke? Right. Okay. So he's homebound now, and I just feel like once you're homebound now, you're not here, the music, the live music, because my dad loves people. Mm. Yeah. He needs to see people's faces, you know? Mm-hmm. So being in the house, you're not seeing nobody, you're not hearing the music. I mean, yes, he's hearing what they're playing on the YouTube, but it's not live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Them something that going to mess with their mental. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You need so, you know? And I used to work as a nurse Girl. back in the days in New York City and I'd, I had a lot of cancer patients. I quit nursing when my mom passed away from cancer because it was too much to moving forward. Mm. So I knew what I felt like. And there's conflict of interest when you are the caregiver of a family member. Not saying it's not a good idea, but it can be overwhelming at times and you have to take breaks or you have to just decline the position because Mm -hmm. it will start affecting your mental. Mm -hmm. And it might be times when you're not even realizing what you're doing and you're physically or just verbally abusing them because you're so either ignorant Mm -hmm. or impatient Mm -hmm. because you have to have patience. And when that situation starts to happen, you just have to fall back. Mm -hmm. You know, just same thing with law too, come look up insurance. You cannot be that person that's responsible when it comes to a family member. And these were things that I was venting about. I wasn't bashing my siblings. I love them, I still do. I mean, I like when we is, but there are just things where I feel like I am the brain of the family. Just listen for once. Follow, at least try out one of my ideas that I suggested. Yeah. Try it, but nobody ever tried it. Mm. So when I keep seeing deteriorating more and more and it go downhill, my start off a cost. me I vent now because I'm like, I'm losing my dad. And I'm would losing vent, my like, dad. On social media. So that part ended up with 2022, my last tour with the Whalers. We were in Canada. Mm-hmm. I have a heart condition. So on the way to Canada, I wasn't feeling well. And I was telling them that, you know, I don't feel good. Something is wrong. Mind you, my cardiologist already told me, you have got to quit this rough life touring thing that you guys do from January to December nonstop. You're going to die if you don't stop. What's oh the condition? I don't mind me asking. So um, arrhythmia. So basically my oh. normal is every two beats, I skip a beat where my blood is pumping backwards. It's not mm-hmm. getting enough blood flow to my heart. Mm. Oh. So if I'm under a lot of stress and anxiety, all that stuff is going to stop. What's your heart? Yeah. Right. Pretty much. And mm. they can't fix it because they said it's not, I have a leaking valve. So it's not as big where, oh my gosh, you need a pacemaker, but it's still not good. Mm. Yeah. So you have to, t- you just be calm or less flying. Mm, so less we were, yeah, less stress. So there's lots of traveling, flying back and forth mm-hmm. uh, on the way to Canada. And I was like, I don't feel well. I got to Canada and I collapsed in the aircraft. Mm-mm. As soon as we landed, I, I passed out. Mm-mm. Right there and then they thought, oh, she swallowed something. Immigration was like, wait a minute. You're the first time here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the airplane? Yeah. No. So yeah, as soon as we landed in Vancouver, I, col- like I passed out. I should be bored. Uh-huh. Yeah. So immigration yeah. assumed now, say, maybe I saw my tech. Yeah. So they had me in there in custom, like, it's okay, just tell us who your supplier is. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, what did you do? What did you take? It's okay. And I'm They're like, ready for shine. They're like, right? just tell me, us right? your supplier. Girls, pull it out. <laughs> You're dying. And I know that they won't put her in a cat scan. So I said to them, I said, no, I said, I'm on a tour, you know, with a band. So I was, they were like, what band? I'm like, the way I was like, oh, they're in baggage claim. You could go check. Like, the band, you used to see the band out taking their equipment, all that stuff. They went out there and nobody was out there. So they're like, no, I'm lying. Oh, wow. So I was like, so nobody never see when they dropped down? No, I was in a different aircraft. So oh. they were coming in from, I think, Alaska. A few was coming from Alaska. A few were flying in from, we're different because I work independent with the whalers. So okay. even though I was with the band, I did merchandise, but that was my company. That was yeah. my business. So mm-hmm. I did merch, my investment, my money. Mm-hmm. They had the music. Mm-hmm. I had the shop. So you don't know what going on. They probably think it was one groupie. 
not even that they just didn't believe my story they really be like it wasn't no it's your first time in the country this oh one it takes some mm. yeah. you know what i'm saying it's up until when i said can we just please make a phone call i put the phone on speaker so you guys can hear and call the tour manager we did that and once they hear that they were like oh where are you we're at the hotel i was like you guys are supposed to wait for me and then the officers was like okay let's check the website he pulled up the website he saw that we were scheduled and he believed me and then they said we're going to escort you to your hotel which they did okay and that happened and so anyway no doctor i ended up going to the hospital by the time oh. i got to my room no i had my suitcase my carry-on had fell on my foot so i broke my toe and realized my toe was broken mm-hmm. so i'm in the room now and may i start feel pain not a pain start to reach me now and went out to the lobby and i was like i don't feel well something is wrong and i was like you have to go to the hospital got to the hospital and realized that my heart rate was not normal mm. and it was too much they had to call the cardiologist in north carolina and all kind of stuff and it was like yeah you need to go home mm. so i had to spend literally the whole first three four days of that tour for me was loss of invest i lost money because i couldn't work mm-hmm. you know so i was just like yeah i have to quit now my exit plan was for October, but at that moment, I realized you have to get off the road. So what, when was this? Oh, this no. was June, 2022. June. So I came home and I said, let me go see my dad. Cause you know, I'm sad now and I miss him. And yeah. you know, I want to tell him the story. What happened to me? Wait, was he living in Florida? Miami. Or? Miami. 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 Mm-hmm. So I went to go see my dad and that's when the problem started. Mm-hmm. I did not like what well, I saw my dad. Mm. I got to the house and my dad was there. I didn't like the conditions and I called. One of my big brother, I want to even say his name. I called him and I said, yo, wait there. Oh, I'm there on the block. Mama just left out. So you say, okay, I'm wait. I still have time. You still can't reach. You reach now. And she wouldn't want him to know. I'm on to him. I cannot play the games, but I never, never like it. So here I am now. I'm suggesting a different option now. I said, tell you what. I think we need to do this, you know. Meaning, let me pay for your nurse then. Let's just do, do some other things. And he said, no, nobody name me had. Mm. So to me you now, me and him start like war. Me and I say, yo, me not like, oh yeah, approach situation. Me think you need a break. Mm-hmm. You need to take a break. Brother, mm-hmm. take a vacation then. Mm-hmm. It's a lot for you. You look like you're stressed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take a break. Why you don't want the break? You cannot manage this person. You're not a medical professional. You mm-hmm. cannot manage him. Mm-hmm. So because me I complain about this and whatever, and then we had a prior incident in 2020 with my dad, which I didn't like. Mm-hmm. I complained about that as well. I won't even get into that because they know exactly what happened. That happened in 2020 and that even made it worse because he was already bedridden by 2022. Mm, wow. So because of that, no, me has to know from the bedridden started, you know, he's going downhill. You mm-hmm. know, because once you lost, you lose your independence. Not only that, as a person, no, you're there thinking that, okay, people got to take you to the bathroom. They got to give you baths now. Yeah. It takes a while to adjust to that as mm. a person, you know, like I said, I've watched my patients go through these things, you know? Mm-hmm. So... We venting, we venting, we venting, and I'm not saying nobody, I do not, and I'm going to start to say, yo, I'm going to talk up, you know, because I would hate for something, I'm a team, I'm going to see what I go on, I'm going to sin on. Yeah. Of course I thought about it. It's not a matter of, oh, you're trying to embarrass your family, or you make up lies, or you put your family business out there. I felt like my dad needed help in, at that time, and I didn't see the money to help him. So I said, you know what? I'm going to open a GoFundMe account. It wasn't about me trying to get money. It was more of, I said, he has fans worldwide. Maybe a doctor or nurse, somebody in that profession that can help him. Yeah. Can see he needs help and would step up and say, hey, I'm a fan, you know, I want to. And people did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People reached out and said, hey, I'm flying right now. Mm-hmm. I have her herbs. I have this, I have that. Where are you guys <laughs> staying? You know, so I did it. The GoFundMe ended up generating some money. I actually went to a facility, organized it, spoke to the doctor. Add him to the GoFundMe where the world can see that I'm not a scammer, mm-hmm. according to them. I yeah, put his name. Yeah, I got with people in this Yeah, I put the doctor they name. If they read this article, though, sh- you know, it's just there. It show the doctor the facility mm-hmm. and says, hey, this is Dr. Brandon. He's responsible for the patient. Right. And when the money was withdrawn, it went straight to the doctor. I never even once touched that money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I had other sponsors offshore that was sending me money and saying, hey, well, something when we pay the bills. And that's what I did. I paid the bill. I mm-hmm. paid for wellness treatment. I paid for physical therapy. I paid for speech therapy. I paid for everything the money could have paid for, mm-hmm. for at least for a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He never went. Wait, wait, wait. Family man never go? No. Your father never go? None the of doctor him? called me and he said, I don't know what you and your brother have. Oh He's my telling God. me that he is part of attorney. I think you guys need to work it out. And I said, okay. I call, try, I call another sibling. 
trying to see if she can mediate because they won't speak to me directly. I said, listen, explain to him that, listen, yes, I never like the idea to go phone when I feel embarrassed, whatever. I apologize. But I feel like Chinese telephone I go on mm -hmm. and then somebody now communicate the message the right way. Mm -hmm. So he kept on snapping and snapping. And then one day she joke and say, him laugh and say, boy, I'm going to take two bills of the money they still, you know. I'm going to say, oh, so you think it's funny? <laughs> Wait, that's his Yeah. Well, I want to say, I take two bills out of the money. Say that. <laughs> say that. Mm. Not, and that's the thing is, I feel like so many other siblings would reach out to me and I said, them have my support, them have my support, them have my back, but I may alone have fight the war publicly. Mm. I may alone in the, in the spotlight I deal with it. I didn't want to do that. Mm. Like even having this conversation with you guys, I don't want to keep speaking about this, but mm -hmm. I just feel like at that time, y'all could have even, interviews were being done behind my back. I even had the observer come and said, hey, come clear your name because be a things I said about you, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's nothing good. She's a thief, she's a scammer, fraud, all kind of thing. And like, this is coming from your family. Family. It um, hurt me so bad. Yeah. But I was just like, when I could have say, you know, with sister, you know, she might look weird or call me crazy like them say. <laughs> we never ask her to do that. We never need that. But yeah. I was sister, Ray, Ray, but no, they may look like I was a stranger. Mm. And the way how they attacked me with those um, interviews, I could have been arrested if I didn't do it the correct way. Mm -hmm. Because th that's a that's a criminal offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I have, a, I have a degree in criminology. Things. Hello, I have a PhD yeah. in criminology. So mm -hmm. please... You know what I do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So wait, so you have a PhD in criminology and a nurse? All right, I grew up in New York City. <laughs> you were in New York, you have to also. And with oh, the money that the bills have paid, yeah. you have to find a job. Okay. Mm. So I went back to school during COVID and finished my degree okay. because there was nothing else. The world was closed, mm -hmm. and you know I needed to do mm -hmm. something. Okay. So I wanted an easier way out. I, mean, I like a school, but never have a choice. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, okay. I did. Um, started from the healthcare first, mm -hmm. and then. But music is my first passion. But you have to have a backup plan. As yeah. you can see, COVID come and everybody who was in music didn't have a backup plan. So something to know for the next bit mm -hmm. outside of music. And yeah. we were the first industry to get hit because mm -hmm. everybody tour got canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no live performances. And I'm always been a hustler. You know, I've, I love to work. People tell you she have 10 different jobs. Mm -hmm. like right now, I'm a singer. I'm also a and I'm still a publicist. I do live music concert. I do so much things because my bills, I like nice things and they're not cheap. <laughs> bills have to pay and money have to spend, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I so, mean... Yeah. You know, I'm really listening. Yeah. At the first, private people send me the interrupt. Because, <laughs> <laughs> really, I feel like me listening, I'm thinking, I'm going to say, why your dad wasn't there things put in place prior to his passing to kind of, given that there's so many of you. Yeah. You know, like you, you mentioned a couple of your siblings that um was, was they your father's children. Yeah. So, when they have um when you know so much i don't know why wasn't there things put in place to kind of avoid this because given that there's so many personalities but your father us. is a connecting no your father yeah. he's a connecting um tree yeah to all of these different leaves like why I'm never just, or branches like why I'm never putting thing put things in place to kind of mitigate so all that is this is my from what i know it's separate from the money but even yeah. just like the funeral things so like. that part because like i said um I, we don't communicate so i wouldn't know but i would have loved for them to reach out because i could have helped too you know mm -hmm. i could have helped organize i could have contributed towards that as mm -hmm. well but um i did see that the minister had said that she was gonna you know we're gonna bring his body home we're gonna step in but still i want to be a part of that life. i mean i miss my mom funeral mm -hmm. you know i grew up in the states at one point, you know, I'm the product, I'm the, I'm a definition of an immigrant in America. I've been in America for so much years, undocumented at some point in my life where the struggle was real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I realized that, you know, I miss my brother, my uncle, my mom's funeral. Okay. This is my you, dad. Oh, I'm guessing, you know, your dad died in, your mom died in Jamaica. No, my dad, mom died in the UK, but I'm saying I wasn't oh, able to, leave, I wasn't able to travel at some point in my life. You know, okay. I was stuck in America. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. That being that immigrant where you, you know, you come there. As, well, I came to America as a child. You know, of course, I was responsible for my immigration status. Mm -hmm. But I ended up overstaying in the country and I was stuck there for a mm -hmm. period of time. And my dad was always worried about me with that situation because he always felt bad. Like, oh, my gosh, this is my fault. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Oh, so you went with him. Yeah. Okay. But moving forward to that, I just feel like if they had reached out, regardless of who was sponsoring and so include us all. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it's a family tribute. Mm. This is a man with a bunch of kids, 41 kids or more, right? Mm. Yeah. Make the 41 and we sing and dance and, and laugh and enjoy. I guess my question was like, wasn't <laughs> even prior to his death, mm -hmm. 
it feel like it was a very disconnected family even prior yeah, to his death. It okay, was because so even while it's, while he was sick leading mm-hmm. up to his death, it was still still like that mm-hmm. because I wasn't able to see my dad. Mm-hmm. I got a phone call July second of last year mm-hmm. after I've been spoken to, spoken to them about a year. They I went to the house January last year to make peace. They didn't want peace. I cooked Sunday dinner. I brought food over. I took my son and I said, "Today is the day." Like it. Me I go make peace, <laughs> and I showed up. Them never like what it is. They didn't know I brought food until days after. They probably yeah. smelled the plate because the way I put it on, because I look a thing pop off of the house. Yeah, but God, they and them start. Man, it's so content. Real up. Me not know. It's like them real up on me. I me I say, I went like this. I said, you know what? I'm in your house. Even though I was invited and let in because I didn't open the door, yeah. I could have because I do know I don't I know the code, but I was let in. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to see him that day. I snuck my son in and said, "Go see Grandpa." When the commotion started at the house, I walked out, and I left. I went home. I was very depressed after mm. that. Um, it took me to a very dark place where I was very lonely, and I was like, "Damn, I can't live my life like this." Like my dad and I are very close. I gotta find another way. And then months start pass, and I realize I still can't see him, still can't hear from him. Nobody's Whoa. telling me what's going on. And then boom, I get a dream the week before Father's Day. I think we're spiritually connected somehow. I got a dream. My dad dreamt me. He was sick. I woke up crying. Mm. I called another big brother that we have no issues. Same mother too. I reached out to him and I said, hey, daddy's sick. And he said, what are you talking about? I mean, I said, I have a dream. It's it's a vision. It's real. Like something is wrong. I said, can you call them and ask if I can come visit? And him say, I'm gonna make a call and see I can go on. I'm say, okay. I had faith in this brother. Like, hey, you gonna do? You know, you gonna help me get a chance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three days pass and you know, you know, phone come and text me and say, yo, what's up? I say, you know, I'm day, you know, still me the the out of town, but. Them say for the most part, him good. But me, I say... For the most part. For the most part. I think it's something <laughs> internal. You might mm-hmm. be looking at him and saying, him a smiling look, but I think something internally was wrong. Mm-hmm. And that was a message that I was getting. I needed your help. Mm-hmm. I got to see you. Father say, pass. When I get to see him, I was heartbroken again. And then July 2nd, I get the phone call. It's your dad. I thought he died that day. Mm-hmm. The way the phone call came in, I started crying. And the person said, no, 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 but it's bad. Mm. You need to speak to your brother. She said, can I give him your number? You didn't even have my number because I changed my number. Because I thought, you know, I'm going to let, let go of this fight. And I said, sure. I unblocked him in my phone. He reached out via text. Because at this point, I said, me, I do this not text. Because now come say, we me not say verbally. Yeah. So we're going to communicate text messages because I need my receipts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And thank God I did that. Mm-hmm. We started texting. And I said, bro, where you there? Me, go on. And I said, yo, me there so-and-so hospital. And I said, 30 minutes, I'm pulling up. I couldn't even drive. Mm. I was in a major car accident in April. So I'm still going through PTSD with me and my son. So that, that kind of Aisha. news, can't drive. You know what I'm saying? Fear thing, can I drive you like that? you been through it, man. <laughs> you been Trust me. Not the first was a lot. You know, I'm a, I'm a warrior yeah. still. Yeah. So now me and the Uber now, me I say, all right. We're texting on reach the hospital. No, we're in Miami. You know, it's, it's very Latino, you know? So I got to the hospital and I'm going to the exactly where they said he was. And all I went to the room, I heard the lady said, no, 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 patient gone, patient gone. So I'm thinking he's gone, like he's dead. So I was just like, oh my God. I fell on the floor. I rolled, I was crying. Oh, Jesus. I started breaking down. That's and then trauma. the doctor rushed over to me and he was like, what's going on? And I was like, the patient that's in this room, I heard he's gone. Like, and she just goes, no, 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 no. He's transferred to a different area. Oh, so I was like, oh, okay. Mercy Speak English, bitch. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, you know, I'm a, so I'm a rush now. Yeah, just say that uh, song. Exactly. <laughs> right. In a hospital. So, almost gave me a heart attack. Yeah. So, I rushed to the, where he was and saw my brother, and immediately he hugged me. You could have never tell this other boy I was saying, like me. Mm. Hug me. Because in that moment, it wasn't about, oh, we feel about each other. Mm. It's exactly. all about that man in that room. Yeah. We hugged. He was crying, and I saw the pain in his eyes, and I knew it was that bad. And I mm-hmm. said, I never want to dig up the past. I don't even want to know what happened the day before. I just want to focus on today, moving forward. And that's where we were. Mm. And I thought we were moving forward. But him never tell the rest of him tribe, say, we had a little 
bonding going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just me and him in the hospital the whole day for a couple hours before the rest showed up. But he didn't mention a word. So so, co- so, so what was the fallout? What, what has been the fallout following the funeral and this? So altercation? that was the fallout because in that visit, we were good. And I went back a second day, July 4th, to introduce another sister that they didn't know that came in from overseas because I knew her, I mean, from New York, because I knew her mm-hmm. and they didn't know her. I want to be, I want to feel comfortable. So I said, let me just show up to introduce her. I'm sure this time you had to snuff me off. But we'll go anyways. <laughs> I tried, you know, style. I do mediating and all that stuff and I say, hey, introducing and each other. And this is other. between the funeral just gone and now? No, this is what I think, I, don't, I think this is what stemmed to the funeral. Right. Oh, I mean, asked about the fallout following the funeral. No, when I reach this, no, no, when I reach this, yeah, I'm only about falling notes. I yeah. keep on falling, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so that happened now. Did my little thing, I little scuff for going at the hospital. At the hospital. At the hospital oh in front of my gosh. dad. I think it was very disrespectful. Who between who? Me and their mom. No, the same brother that me and him was cool. Yeah. We made up a few days. Yeah, he didn't tell them that it's cool. Mm-hmm. We are to move forward. It's all about this man in this room. Mm-hmm. Right. So I walked in the room. I saw that the room was crowded. So I stepped back. Come here with my turn. Mm-hmm. Once the room got empty, I stepped in because they told me to step in. So I mm-hmm. stepped in the room. The mom walked in. No. In this moment, she didn't know that I just I just got there. And it was my time. Because obviously we're going by time. It's a lot of us. <laughs> so I'm stand up there and I'm expecting you to be like, Mom, it's okay. She just got here. I'm not saying nothing. And she flip. We have to switch up now. Switch up time. And I'm looking at her like, what? So I look back at my dad like, dad, I'm here. I'm here when I'm here. You know, you hear me say, we're going to switch up. And her voice getting louder and louder and louder. And no disrespect to their mom. Oh my gosh. But that incident, he could have stepped in and said, mom, it's okay. She just got here. Give her a five. Or yeah. mom, come with me. Mm-hmm. He allowed her to start yelling. So at this moment, now that for the third yell, me yell louder. Mm-hmm. Cause your voice louder than my voice. Mm-hmm. And since you don't activate crazy Aisha, you're going to get crazy Aisha now. Mm-hmm. Because what are you doing? Mm-hmm. We're in the hospital room and the nurse is running the room now and say, hey, 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 this, can't do this here. Mm-hmm. No. So I stepped out in the hallway and I was like, where's the social worker? Because at this point, I'm looking for a social worker because I want to know what are my rights? What's really going on? When can I come back? When is it, you know? I didn't want the drama. I'm already hurting seeing him the way I'm seeing him. So I was like, you know, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. So I walked my way out to the hospital building. He chased me outside. He says, come back, come back. Your turn now. I said, listen, I'm good. You never stop the incident. Exactly. At the time when it happened. Mm-hmm. And you got here now and say, she come here, come do the most, which is what I'm hearing too. Mm-hmm. So I say, no, I'm going to take on myself. Took myself away. I stayed home. Never went back. Mm. Never went back. I just kept following up. I would call the hospital on my own terms. And, you know, give them my name and get information on him and a few days later i got a phone call from a colleague at the courthouse saying i think this is your name in the system you have a court order i said say what now he's like yeah can i come see you i was like yeah pull up at my crib the officer came and it was me but what happened is i'm i still go by my married name but it was filed in my my maiden name mm. so obviously the data birth match and when i talk about description this boy described everything down to the local don't come a big to him describe on the paper <laughs> the brock one yeah the brock one <laughs> so if i was a criminal like i was a criminal i was yeah. like damn bro you went hard he i was just like what is this for he took out i tried to well he tried to file a restraining order Right there and then my brain kicked in. The criminology brain kicked in. So basically, if the judge granted you this restraining order, if I had showed up at a hospital not knowing that you have this, You'd I could get arrested, arrested saying that I'm trust I'm violating this restraining, restraining order. order. But luckily, it didn't make no sense. Mm-hmm. So once I got it, I did what I have to do. I I responded to it and you know, I listed information that was saying that you can reach out to the judge assistant and send evidence per to the Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. So I did all of that. I sent in all my evidence or text messages, you know, to say, hey, what kind of harassment this when you are text me for come to hospital and we've been communicating on a peaceful level. So mm-hmm. everything he stated in there looked like a lie, which it was. Mm-hmm. So I, I was just keep saying to myself, who oh, could I set you up to do this? Like, bro, why are we here? This man is in the hospital. Like, yeah. oh, we even reached yes up. Yeah. So restraining order got denied. Well, it says denied. And then the judge, you know, it says, we'll get a Zoom meeting. All these things work is if you come with a witness, obviously it's going to be more than a 15 minute session. You're going to require to come back with even an attorney or 
a two to four hours session. Mm. So he showed up with a witness. So I said, well, y'all have witness now? What me do? Something women don't know about now. So the judge rescheduled it. We came back again. This time he came without a witness. We did the whole thing and it got thrown out because it was, it was crapped. It was pure BS. Yeah. In that mediation meeting on a Zoom, we both agreed to the judge that we're not doing this. The judge said, listen, this man is sick. I want to stop the foolishness right now. I'm going to lock up the two owner. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. You know? She said, who want peace? Raise an hand. I see where this I go. I'm a one this time. I don't want to see your name. I don't want to see your name. If you see him on the left, go on the right. You leave him alone. You leave her alone. Stop it. Throw it out. We're done. We both agree. Peace. Mm -hmm. I don't think he communicated that message to the family or whoever was pressuring. I don't know who boosted him for do that, which was wrong. But I feel like I said, Chinese telephone get plays a lot. But I'm the black sheep, me the rebel, me the mad one. Like them say me have mental problem. I don't know which pill me I take, but me have mental problem apparently. <laughs> so with that, a lot of miscommunication and people not doing the right thing and trying to make peace. Yeah. It, things just get, a lot of things get passed around and storytelling and don't make no sense. And just always fall back to me, the female. Can I ask, like, are mm. you the one, are you the only sibling that is, like that is fighting verbal verbally publicly 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 because so, i'm wondering if the like the chosen family as you call them they have all issues vents. with other. no they do okay. that is why i had to introduce that sibling that day that came from new york mm. because they feel like she had disrespected them in the past and they don't even know who she is mm. she had called one time and said oh my god i don't you know i want to come back like a fool a father alone you know what i'm saying there's mm. been a lot of feud yeah mm. but that's why i mean i'm that I'm the verbal one. I mean, and as they said, I'm the whistleblower because I may blow the whistle, make the world know what I go on and the rest of the siblings know what I go on. I yeah. think I remember you <laughs> letting the world in on how, like the, the condition of Aston, yeah. the picture and, and social When media. I post a picture and I, I said, oh, did that she's lying. Like, she must take it down. Right. They said that she's lying and all that stuff. And then my brother, Aston Jr., he went live with my dad. So I came out and say, so what daddy look like here? And that live was worse than my photo. Uh. Mm. So people were like, this is a never lie then because mm. you come live now and we mm. are sitting man and can barely talk. Yeah. Him here in a comb, him teeth in a brush, clothes dirty. But you're here trying to defend. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They don't think. You mm. take down the picture, why? Yeah. I took the photo down because I'm working and I have people on my page as well that saying, you know, we, we believe you, we support you and because you seem to be labeled as a problemat the problematic person and it's all about you, 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 you. Just take it down. We mm. hear you. It's okay. One day, the truth will come out and you will have your moment without having to say anything. Mm. Right. And I think the funeral with all that stuff is just like, my only thing is, like I said, I never said anybody killed my dad. I'm just saying he was sick. He needed help. I asked for help. You guys told the world I was lying. He's gone now. How mm. do you feel about that? Oh. I mean, yeah. it's a stroke. But it's not like you have yeah. some resentment towards yeah. the family yeah. members. I have no resentment towards him. And that's a, that's a sad thing. I don't. Mm. I just wanted to be a part of helping. Mm -hmm. he, he asked me to help. My dad looked at me and said, why are you so far away? Because I wow. moved away from them. In 2020, I moved to Palm Beach because I felt like I needed a change now, a change of scenery. It's when my dad had an accident, I moved back. I came to see him and he said to me, you gone so far. Mm. What if something happened to me mm. or what, and a half away? Mm. So I moved back down to Miami to be closer because now he had an accident now. And I know that, you know, I don't know. He's bedridden now. So yeah. I said, let me come closer. I'm not saying I was there every day. He didn't live with me anymore because I moved out of mm. the home that I was in with them. You know, but I was already, I was always there. Mm. All right. So what, yeah. what? No, was the fallout of this altercation at the, at the funeral. funeral? Yeah, because I was like, was it it's captured either, on I'm hearing, it is, it was actually, because I was told that it was the person uploaded it. I didn't even see the fight, but yeah, the guy that, that did, that recorded it, yeah. he uploaded at some point, I heard. I was you said on you the was going to upload it on your Instagram too? Where I was waiting for that. So the footage my other brother sent me was from my phone, because he was recording my interview with my phone as well. Mm -hmm. So when he sent that, he said he didn't get that part because Asta must have knocked the phone out as well because my phone is cracked so look like him knock him and if by the time if you pick up the phone he missed that part right oh so i only have that footage but so the, you get the, where him yeah but the altercation footage it is recorded because the, the camera guy did upload it on his social apparently he was he was told to take it down i'm still trying to figure out what his name was to find it mm -hmm. but i'm pretty sure people must have screen recorded it but it was up because we were on the news it came on the news i think so yeah because mm -hmm. my grandma was like oh i saw you on tv so i was like oh well Mm. So what you gotta do? You allow it alone, like. 
Me nah, yeah. fight for them. Them fight. Them fight for them. My thing is, my dad is gone. I mm. can nothing bring him back. Fighting, not gonna bring him back. Yeah, mm. true. It's not going to bring him back. And it seemed as if, like, when your father was alive, there was because usually it's like death either bring people families together or break them apart. Yeah. yeah. And I think that you guys were fractured before. Yeah, mm-hmm. was fractured. Mm-hmm. So I doubt it's going to be any situation of repair yeah. or coming together. And I kind of passed a statement and I said to them, and I said, listen, he's gone. When you can go on to the reason why I said that, <laughs> I said that. that not, are you are no, an Aquarius? T- I'm an Aquarius. When you're born. <laughs> February 3rd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Re- she can she can see with you on you know the reason I said that astrological level <laughs> me say, in a way I mean we can love him from a distance you know because I've come to the realization that not everybody blood is family mm. so here what happened we know him for about what, eight years more and go back to unknown you know? when you stay over there so I stay over here we good mm. love in the same way but until and already if it come together and because they narrate me you know like I do interviews I'm a big up my brother because to me Nobody not proud of me than me of my brother. Like, I will put my brother up here. This is Aston Jr. Aston Jr. Because he's a bad bassist, a bad drummer, and he, he play everything. Let me put this to the test now. What you thought of his performance in One Love? On One Love? Yeah. Him and Tom Cruise. Him glad to stay. I'm act like him and Tom Cruise. Boy, you had three lines, bro. Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I sh- this is why them not like you. <laughs> but I, that's the thing. I just can't be fake. I don't did, have no did, filter. Did, 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 did injustice. Yep. Inju- I mean, there was a funny moment when him said, "Jazz." Yeah. But you're not Tom Cruise. <laughs> and the thing is, to me, me not gonna lie. I Aisha. feel like you really Im- Aisha. 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 <laughs> Aisha. Better than they put on one lock spam me. I'm, I'm joking. Well, I actually, yes. I wanted to. I wanted to play Judy Mowat. I actually, I was thinking about auditioning for it. But I'm in Vendetta with Kimani. So I was mm. like, oh, I have my own little show, you know, Vendetta Badness, and you know, and them mm. kind of show them like. Mm. Yeah. What you thought about the movie overall? One Love? Yeah. yeah. One Love, I think it was a nice Sunday matinee. The matinee. <laughs> yeah, but that's, or that's so and so. No, it was a, it's a good <laughs> watch. There was some <laughs> nice, funny matinee. moments, which actually was surprising, like even yeah. like the Junior Marvin song, the introduction. Yeah. It was yeah, a nice, no, it was yeah. nice. When I get involved in people in storyline, but it was a nice movie to watch. Mm-hmm. But like you guys asked me about um, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Aisha, we're trying to make. Peace no, the week, you know why I made that? Because you know what? I came to that premiere with love. Mm. I was so excited to yeah, support him. I went to the premiere. I was here in Jamaica working and I heard about the premiere like the day before it. I didn't know about Everybody. it. Everybody. <laughs> but I never invent, invent myself. Yeah. So I'm going to show up. <laughs> never have no clothes because I didn't come out here for that. So I was just like, I was in the office trying to buy clothes and I guess once I made the accent in my church, I got the price them. So I said, I'm not pay 200 and 30 for no sheen dress for 20 dollars. So here we got them. I'm going wear it in my suitcase. You see our struggle here. Yeah. So I said, I'm have something can be a cocktail or nothing too fancy. So I put on my mouth. But obviously when I showed up, everybody was wearing the red. I was just like, I could have been, I could have came out a little bit better, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm on the red carpet. And I forgot who it was. I'm not sure what media representative said, hey, can we have a photo with you too? So right there and then I mean I said, to me, I'm okay with it. I tap him. I said, excuse me, bro. They're asking, you know, can we take a photo together? Ooh. The look when we get, if looks could have killed. <laughs> then him go open him out and I said, oh, man, I come here for that picture. And I was coming for the bad look at thing. And I said, I'm not even going to say that. No, but, but I don't understand. Yeah, it was rude. Attention. Like, I really. And I haven't seen him in a year and a half. That was the first it. time seeing him Under since coffee. I left the band. So I was, I was actually, was going, I was, I wanted to hug him. Yeah. Cause he had walked past me back before we did red carpet. You know, we went straight to the music part. We went backstage. He walked past me him shake him head. So I'm going to go, so namaste, bitch. Okay. <laughs> 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 you can say that. Yeah, yeah, so your dad yeah, died yeah, after, yeah. right? Your dad died before. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, so yeah, 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 I went home and mm-hmm. went to see him and, you know, but I was excited. Me, I come and say, oh, my brother, that's what I'm going to see you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, remember my uncle is a drummer, you know, Carly, you know, we don't have Carly kids playing the drummer. Hector did a great job, but even Hector was so like happy to see me in the red carpet. Like, yeah, oh my Hector God, what do you think back. I did? I'm so honored to meet you, the mm-hmm. rest of the family. So we're like, we're the two Barrett family, Mr. Wally Powie. Mm-hmm. And I them two Monday highlight that like that that brand that helped lift the sound of the whalers and Bob Marley. So I'm like, we're both here. Put your feelings aside. Because mm-hmm. I'm here seeing you with other whalers member too, and you smile with them. So why you can't smile with your sister? Mm-hmm. So that's your hypocrite. That's how I see you. Like, Aisha, maybe you're, maybe uh, you do something. Maybe I'm the problem. Me. Yeah. I don't know. Because I'm going to start coming to reggae daily and I'm going to like that look of something. Wow. 
<laughs> I made a problem. You see. Maybe you're, oh, maybe you know, you know. I'm there's like three sides to the story. Yes, yes, there's your your side, side the wrong, but then my the side, and the truth. Maybe yeah. there's something, but it all boils down to we're still family, and like every family have their own feud. And yeah. nobody's. I have a sister in France right now. She calls every day crying. She's begging for peace. She's begging for me, saying, "All them do is just say, get up in eyes. Them not appearing in the mind. I'm gonna keep on saying to her, my girl, I better just lower it, you know. Cause you know, sister, we're in Afghanistan with it. So, it's, it's, so it's essentially, so <laughs> it, it, I just want to break down. It's like pretty much a chosen family against everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And a few, like I said, a few know are on the chosen side because I feel like they want to be included. Mm. Yeah. So they're still a fake too, but I cannot be fake. Mm. I cannot be fake. Let mm. me ask you this. Yeah. How y- your father is a legendary yeah. figure, mm. a part of a legendary band. How involved was the government with the funeral? So I believe they're the one that did the Jamaica service. But okay. yeah, I think they want to organize it and step mm. up and did that. I've, the only thing that I could say that I would rather him be maybe at Hero Circle than Duff Cards. I feel like he's yeah, tossed in with the masses and I that. feel like he deserves a better recognition and respect and mm-hmm. rest in place. Move Carly too. You know? Move both of them. Put a nice, we can't give him a museum then. Put a nice like a resting home for both him and Carly. Do I look a nice like a mural something? I would love to see that. Mm-hmm. But I think both of them deserve that kind of respect and honor. Yeah. How involved yeah. was the Marleys, if any at all, Knowing that he was sick, were they involved in, you know, the Marley estate in? I cannot know, speak on that family because um, I really don't know. I know my brother and them, they work together. Mm. Um, I do have affiliation with another one of that family member, but um, as far you said Julian, take away. Was yeah, yeah, Julian. Julian, we were, yeah. we're, I think Julian is very close to the family to us, very close to my dad. Um, mm. Everybody's close because, you know, everybody had reached out to, and, mm. you know, Ziggy had sent in his, you know, condolences and yeah. Sidella mm. as well sent in. But um, because I'm not. I don't have power of attorney and I wasn't involved in anything. Mm-hmm. I cannot say they didn't do anything because they communicate with them. Right. Mm-hmm. But okay. as far as I know, when my dad was sick and it's not their responsibility, mm-hmm. Ima 41 Pitney is us to get together mm-hmm. and take care of our father. True. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the case. We only had a few siblings mm-hmm. calling the shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This has to do with nobody family. Just our family is re- this is our responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would not put that on them. That is not and their I mean, responsibility. Your, your father at all. wasn't mm-hmm. struggling financially. Um, I'm not gonna even say he's struggling because if we are tour as whalers, mm-hmm. I could have two dollar we are make a dollar belong to him because we're out here on behalf of his name and legacy. Mm-hmm. So I say do the right thing. Put put the money where it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Pay for the right care. Do the right thing because at the end of the day, we're all on this platform because of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody else is responsible for his medical bill but us. True. And I would never True. put another family. I would never speak on them and yeah, say they didn't yeah, do some this. Some people probably would say, oh, so who the Marley Yeah, and sometimes the fans them like for jumping and to them little yeah. things. And I ignore that. And sometimes, even when I went public to it, look away because what I erupted between me and my family, it's a Barrett war. But because the fans are dragging their names, it look away. So, you know, mm-hmm. I did apologize for that because it was never my intention. Yeah. It's really to shake up my little Barrett family with them just need some little shaking. I look like say not even earthquake can shake them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to shake, you know, but something I'm going to shake, you know. You tried your but best. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, oh but... I yeah. mean, I guess, I guess the, the, the grandma for assault but like I said, COVID was happened. the end. And of... a lot of people, you know, income kind of. Yeah. And as oh. far as, you know, royalty goes to, you know, and every day you see check and whatever, something, you know. A lot of things going on behind behind the scenes as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I was saying that they they at the funeral with the the fight, the altercation, yeah. is pretty much the end. I think no, no. Junior saw me with the microphone and thinking that I was saying something bad about them. Maybe he thought I was venting, saying because I wasn't included in the service. Yeah, he realized that oh, she has a microphone now. She's going to be included in the documentary or something. So. Uh. You're not supposed to be involved. So that's oh, why he was oh. like, what are you doing? Oh. So I think that's really what the problem is. He's, mm-hmm. And I'm hearing that somebody said that somebody went to go call him mm-hmm. because he's at the hole watching the body go down. Somebody from his mother's side tapped him and said she over there to interview. And I saw comes in run. Come, even though no women did I say. Mm. Mm. You know, maybe a priest say, oh, Watch her child look some sort of but notoriety he, while at the funeral. Where she should have there, so I'll watch her father. But that's dumb though, her. because I can't do interview anywhere. And if me really, I got this year, which I've never done before, I could do it regardless. Freedom of speech, it can't stop me mm. from so mega say. But why would I choose there then? If that's the case, I'm gonna bash you. No, says a whole community, I want to, right? Yeah, why would I choose a place like that? I didn't do it at the service, so what am I gonna do it at 
Right, that's all. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know what I'm it's saying? It's still a funeral, eh? Yeah. So that's why I think like common sense sometimes don't work in their best favor, but because if you really think about it, like, come on, logically speaking, why? <laughs> uh, I shall <laughs> problem. I uh, shall problem. You is a problem. I'm all, you know? I'm all died. No, I make it clear. No, don't worry, I'm tell them all the while. And I say, listen, me know I'm a bomb. I probably miss a couple of screws. I'm going to know if they're going to sell it at Home Depot. I'm going to know. But <laughs> it is what it is. Mm. You know? I'm, you, you, you seem to have the intention to want things to yeah, work out. And yeah, yeah. Based I do. on what you told us, you've made several efforts right. to. I've made you know, efforts. Yeah. And I'm still, even a few work. days ago, I posted, I'm crying for peace because I'm still being attacked by their fans. Mm. Mm. There is a so called band manager of theirs still attacking me. How? He's, so he inboxed a friend of mine from New York City, not even realized it's a small world. Telling the girl, oh, you know, she hit him, she attacked him. You weren't even there. Mm. You're not even in Jamaica. Mm. But you just hear yourself, look, a scuffle go on here, put you in. And these are the things that they do. Yeah, run up him out and you, know, you wasn't there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he also made a comment and said, you know, family man, last word was, she's disgusting. My dad don't even talk like that. And that really hurt my feelings. And then he began to talk about my child. Always picking on my... Now my son is 12 and he's autistic. Wow. So I feel no. like if he wants to start attack my child. Oh, no. This is no longer a Barrett war. Mm. It's a different war this. But I'm saying, well, why are we oh there? Why is my yes. kid? Mm. But they want to trigger me. So they do these things oh, no. to get a reaction. Yeah, and when I do react to this, it's like, look at her, she's crazy. And yeah. also they told the cops. Right after the cops took me now to safety mm-hmm. and asked me what happened. He said to the cop, no, I'm a sister man, she's a good man, a warrior, so she's still, she'll take her medication today, no worry, goodbye tomorrow. Judge her. Like, what pills? Wait, have you ever taken any psychiatric pill? Mm-hmm. Just for us. No, I'm not on a pill. <laughs> have you ever been psychiatric evalu- evaluated? No, I'm just call myself crazy. Aisha, it's a fun, like, jolly comedian, but I'm not mad. Mm. And then no. just what kind of people? Me like, I, I want to tell you something. Yo, as yo, as sad as, as I mean, as listen. Is this is what you say. Me no mad that I touch more two times. Me no mad. <laughs> no, me no mad. Me crazy. Me crazy, but me no mad. But no, no it's a, it's a, this is disrespect. Like, yeah, just stop yeah. that. You know, yeah. everybody have a side, and everybody triggers. You're emotional. You're gonna say stuff at times. Yeah, like, and I guess it's a really emotional, highly sensitive time for everybody. Yeah. It was. Even, even and from the stroke. It's everybody like, is grieving. Yeah. Even before the grievance starts, everybody was dealing with the fact that he was in a situation where, you know, he wasn't himself anymore. He's fragile. And, mm. you know, this was something that's supposed to be expected. You yeah. know, we don't People know. People have differences of opinion on how to handle and that. Think, right. So yeah, too, so I'm not bashing like him probably on that. never helped. Like, I feel like your, fa- your father knew that you guys were fighting. And he wouldn't like, like that. Never. That's why I left the room. When yeah. I got yelled at, I left the room because he could hear us. Mm-hmm. When I went to visit my dad in those last days, when I got to the hospital, they said to me, he won't recognize you. He's at that stage where he don't know who is there. Mm-hmm. And I said to them, try me. And she's like, go ahead. I walked in the room and I was like, you know, I looked at him and I was like, it's Aisha. He's looking at me, but he's looking, that's not even nothing Mm -hmm. and i said okay we'll try this again i have a child nickname i said dad it's miss tibbs tibbsy and him move again and him look you know i was there because that name triggered something Mm. yeah he couldn't talk but then when i said that he responded i said if you can hear me i said i'm gonna touch your hand i need you to twitch i touch him and he jump Mm. so i said okay i went back to the nurse i said you know it's me and she started smiling she was like good i'm <laughs> glad he recognized somebody mm. but back in the room and I, I was you know i spent time with him that day we had a good time i lock off for their music with them did i play i started playing him all my new music <laughs> upcoming stuff i'm gonna say hey, if you hear some new things <laughs> <laughs> no i'm gonna say you know you know i'm looking at him and the yeah, situation i mean i say one, make you know me up to you because know, you haven't seen me for a while. I mean, yeah. I, I try to cheer, man. I'm not telling about no negative, no fight, no nothing. I cheer, mm. man. I say, yo, daddy, me take me soon, boss. You know, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. me, I feel mean, and I started playing my new song, which is yeah. on the Dutty Rock um album. Yeah. So I'm mean, playing my new stuff, and I mean, I say, yo, and he's looking at me like. I can find a key. Oh, the key. I is got so. that look. <laughs> I swear to you, I look at his face, and his tears was falling from his face mm. so i know that then me said i find the key yes. yeah find the key <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good visit mm-hmm. i looked at him and you know and i, I don't said, like right. what's happening no. i don't like, I don't like it either no. and you know, and it's, it's 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 dragging like it's still continuing because and know. they're doing things behind closed door is it because my only thing is which i'm being asked from other families and you know both families as well to say we kind of need you to stop 
don't take our family thing to the media, you know, mm-hmm. kind of hold back on your posting you know, on certain things. And I understand where that's coming from, but I also express why I did it. I said, you have to understand that the first incident happened, none of you guys are reaching out to me and saying, Aisha, are you okay? Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? Let's talk to you. Let's hear your side. Yeah. I feel like you guys took their side and run with it. Mm. And every time I feel like I'm holding things in, I'm holding it in, it got to a point where it's bottled up. I explode. Yeah. Mm. And that last moment, I wasn't even going to go on the gram again and do that. But because I was attacked at the burial, turn on my life, same time I said, people, people, look what I go on out here. Like, you know, because I'm sick and tired of being quiet every time they attack me. And they do things. Too much I'm wake up sometimes I can't like them on Instagram. <laughs> Violation, somebody have flagged my page. Mm. Wow. Even my Whalers merch page, which my company, it's a licensed company, got flagged for copyrights. That's how I make my money. Just so I had to retrade, trade my, rename my brand and all that stuff. I mean, if I said, what's it? Why? But now I come on found the music. I now bash on me have my youth for feed. I have bills just like, oh no, like when, since it's a copyright infringement, when before you guys were doing your own thing, I was doing mine. It was never an issue. Mm. I pay my taxes. Uncle Sam know about the business and know about me. Mm. Why not flag my thing? Mm. Whalers belong to all of us. Mm. It's not a one man band. True. We're all family. It's all of us legacy. It's not a one person legacy. Like work together. Let's, you know, we don't have to see each other. We don't have to deal with each other about the war, the rumors, the propaganda. Like, we don't have to, have to stop, man. Like, mm-hmm. I want to say, like, I feel like <laughs> dad should have probably done more when he was alive to probably bring you all together. together. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the issue because maybe it sounds like he's like, you know, in an adult years when I find new people and, you know, like there wasn't. Like it's one thing to be related, but it's a whole nother thing yeah. to be family. And I feel like probably that was the but issue. But this circle, we're all close. Oh. Everybody worked together. Mm. We're all on the road together. So no grew up together, I said. No, I moved here into I moved to Miami in twenty sixteen. Oh which is twenty seventeen when is when I've been around them. So I joined the band in twenty seventeen. So did, early. did they know about you prior to that? They of course they knew about me. Yeah, oh, we okay. all know about each other. Oh, but we didn't grow up together. But I knew yeah. of them, then knew of me. Mm-hmm. But, to but say, you never really get to bond, right? Because like I grew that, up in New York yeah. City. I believe they were in either Jamaica, between Jamaica and Florida. Mm. So I I moved there to be close to them mm. because I was raised by strangers in New York. So when I finally had a chance to be around to say I could stop saying my friend is my cousin or this is my fake brother, this was my real siblings. Mm. I wanted that, so I was happy to move closer to them, and mm. we were very close. Mm. But I'm sister bank, auntie bank, auntie Santa. I'm a tad of being used. You yeah, know, no. that's just how I feel like what the relationship was about. Mm. And at some point, you have to learn to just start saying no. And I think when I start pulling back, there's issue. When I start speaking up, it's going to be an issue. But I think I became too verbal. Mm. And it's like, also, oh, she know too much. Let's get rid of her, you know. But it's always been love. And my dad don't like the fight. He's not a worry. He don't like them something like that. So I know right about no, he's still not happy. Mm. Yeah. Because we're fighting, mm. yeah. You know, I just want him to rest in peace, knowing that Truly. we can come to some kind of, some kind of, you know, resolution. Some resolution to like, yeah. even if you want to go left and go right, can we just agree that we are going to stop this right now? Yeah. yeah, I'm telling them I'm done. I'm telling the Marley families I am done. I'm telling everybody I am done, but when still have when the people them antagonize me, mm. same way. Same way. <laughs> Even up to yesterday, <laughs> their mom, sister, jump on my page with a negative comment. Like I went to Dovecot Saturday because obviously that moment Tuesday yeah, was robbed. Ruined. So I went back again, mm-hmm. looking for my brothers and sisters. I found them, paint up the grave, clean up, plant some little weed, get them a spliff. You know, do some little nice things, all I vibe with them. And you, you, lady, I don't even know you from nowhere. And you jump in at that moment, that pose, for come say, you need to go over there more often and clean it like, Somebody ask her, you want the job? Like, why are you on my page? Yeah. And wh- why you have to even comment? Like, these are things that they do. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. just leave me alone. Your father like, shouldn't have so much help. <laughs> me, I cry. Pe- <laughs> you know what? My mother was a sweetheart. I'm, I'm a makeup baby, and that's the problem. Me, a makeup baby. I'm a sweetheart wow. baby. So that's the problem. Wow. You got, there are too many of y'all. Too many. Too many, many of y'all. Me y'all. Me like, me tell him all the while, you know, I say, it's you, sir, your body, you know. You know, you don't have a type. You put a wig on a broomstick <laughs> and you suck it. Like, <laughs> Seem to be the whaler way. <laughs> Give me some answer, like, you know, I'm a type. <laughs> Listen, I have siblings, black, <laughs> oh white, God. Chinese, every race, every culture, my sister all over the world, every everywhere, everything. Mr. Uh, bro, you know, a, you have a type. 
Rolling yeah. Stone. I got Bastard. no time. <laughs> <laughs> Tour in the world, Ay, meeting right. multiple women. God. Yeah, yeah, go on, you know. Oh. Yeah. yeah, double. Sample. Yeah, sample. sample. Yeah. Wow. The wares. Yeah. Yeah. Go to cuisine, the wares. This is burning. Oh my God. But you're yeah, a singer. Yeah. You, you have a song on the Dutty Rock Rhythm. Sean yes, Paul. I have a new um, single on the Brimstone Rhythm. 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 That Dutty Sean Paul. Yeah. yeah. Are you yeah. on his label or is it just a song on the, the Rhythm? Oh, I'm not yet. But I mean, I like to consider myself the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting it out there in case you're thinking about it. But yeah. no, I'm not I'm not signed to Dutty Rock Spots. And next woman come about no more. Hey, I'm the first lady. Right? <laughs> 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 no, I not. Not. Again. No, no, man. Why you feel like you can't come take my spot? <laughs> no, it's somebody who I look up to, you know, in music and Sean, respected yeah. Sean. He's a legend, and you legend. know, he's very supportive of my music. So you know, big respect and grateful for that opportunity to be a part of this project. So, and I'm sure, you know, you're pretty much a dedicate your career. In memory of your father, say, oh, I need to be successful for Anna. Yeah. So otherwise. Right. I feel like my mission, not only as an artist, I feel like my dad wasn't given the platform that he deserved, as mm. as you call himself, the architecture of reggae music, the founder. He feel like, I, I mean, I feel like the work he, him and my uncle Carly put in, that they weren't recognized enough. I feel like when you talk about the Whalers, everybody's just like, oh, Bob Marley, Bob Marley. But they don't realize that also that the drum and bass, the heartbeats of the people, like mm -hmm. they play a big role into putting that brand into Bob Marley and the Whalers. It was band leader. Yeah. And then I feel like because of 41 away, <laughs> most of us are talented. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm not knocking Junior, you know, but no for we. I have some sisters of bad pun the bass too. Mm. Bad bass. Mm. So I'm, my thing is, I like the rest of the city, the tribe. Like, what we can start a barret band if that's the case. Mm. Let it be known. We're all talented. We all have skills. And we all represent family man and highlight him mm. in a way where we can give him back that recognition yeah. through mm. us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, I do pop music. I do mm. reggae. I do pop. But, and I'm actually a country singer too. So, I mean, I'm very versatile with what I do. You know, but obviously the legacy and I have to respect him too. So, I got to be careful what I do as well. True. Mm. Because, like I said, would I dress a certain kind of way to I get the backlash like watch out yeah, yeah, naked again yeah, Rasta. Yeah. 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 that's what I'm call it reggae dolly not more your Hello. Rasta. you don't more have to dress to be Rasta <laughs> <laughs> but no you know no. lots of things you have to it's there you can't yeah. change Rasta what's written that. but you know I want to be myself at the same time Twist. too mm. <laughs> give me the dread right now you know let's say me have locks for my head right now right mm. three four years down the line my boss now and then I'm a battery rider go here watch out now I'm a battery rider so I start off the battery rider the people that don't say, yeah, this Reverse. are you. Reverse. Yes. Reverse. That's what I call myself, reggae. Yeah. Dolly. Uh, mm. But you yeah. mentioned, <laughs> you, earlier you mentioned your health condition and I was wondering if that would affect your career in any way. The, the thing about that is the traveling. You see, being yeah. on with, with what Whaler's schedule look like and our normal thing. Mm -hmm. January to December, pretty much non-stop. Yeah. It's very hectic. Mm -hmm. You know, and anybody too, if you're touring like that, you need to take breaks. Not only mental breaks, but health breaks detox breaks there's so many things need to be done right and the thing about i'm i'm blessed for the opportunity to be a part of that legacy where i got the chance to be on the road so i'm starting out backwards so even though i'm in a really boss theater or whatever as an artist mm -hmm. i live the life as a touring artist yeah so i know what to expect on the road you know i know the promoter them work you know the look of skeezy man they something them man mm. yeah. inside oh so i know what to expect when that moment come for me to have my own tour mm. so so i you know i'm grateful for that yeah but you need those breaks a lot of artists it's not for the week tour life is not for the week no. nope not for the week because some days i never be it <laughs> you have to have your wipes. You have to have your wipes. Yeah. Really, yeah. That's what? crazy. It's like camping. Wow. Sometimes you go some places where you never know your tour bus are brought down. I've got final a bush. Yeah. We have moments when man are fling things in the back across the boat. Across the boat. Ew. <laughs> I'm just saying it. It's a rough life, but it's a beautiful opportunity. And it's, you know, every artist should experience that. But mm. it's not for the week. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's how artists really make their money. You have to go on tour. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have yeah, to go yeah, out yeah, and yeah, put yeah. out your merchandise too, not just mm -hmm. on the live performances. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to go out and brand yourself, you know. It's a hard work. It's a lot of hard is. work. I should give thanks. Thanks to, you know, for telling us a story, hopefully, lead to some resolution. Yeah. Uh, I'll go on, cause, yeah. I'm sure people are going to listen to this, watch this, and say, yeah, we don't like with the family fight. Nobody wins when the family feuds, though. Nope. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. Hopefully, some resolution can fall. Soon, Man. too. 
quick though. Very soon. Man. Yeah, I wouldn't would mind waking up tomorrow, tomorrow and I get a phone Sad. call saying, can we meet? You know, <laughs> I really want peace. True. Mm. Like I said, we don't have to be huggy, huggy and we don't have to Just be on the phone yeah, either. You know? I do feel like I'm owed an apology. Mm. I'm not saying I didn't do anything wrong as well. Maybe going forward publicly, I do. They, I embarrass them. Maybe they want me to apologize for that as well. I'm open to that. But okay. June, you owe me an apology. You do. You're wrong for that no, attack. We reach physical assault. Everybody mm. owe each other. We all owe the family an apology, mm. and we need to fix this. Yeah, True. and just kind of find and the ways bigger people them who own on the ears need to either step aside if we can't set some good example and make we figure it out, mm. or the coming and set some good example and said, all right, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Because it's sad. There are growing people that are actually causing this segregation between us. Yeah. Mm. And then I fix it and I make it worse. Like, we can't live like that, you know? And no one to ride on the side Every single day and night You turn me on my delight See you miss the love of mine a day from the start, you're for day upon the glory And I'm here like your wife, me no care who before me And they pull them a hold me, your grip is a trophy That can someone when me know what you say, I pull up on a low and day Foot by show, all I'm in my side, yeah Good vibes only Them things in my life No bad energy in my life Good vibes only Lately these are my essential This is the essential road Dance and shout Squeeze me tight, the breath is out of me totally Take control of me You somewhere you're not supposed to be Your vibe is right, it's taking over me Your body's shaking now Come closer Come closer